In this video, we're going to try to derive an expression from statistical mechanics, which will allow us to calculate the chemical potential if we know what the partition function for a substance is. So to remind ourselves from previous videos, we have the internal energy, also equal to the expectation value of the energy, is equal to the partial derivative of the natural log of the partition function, Q, with respect to the inverse temperature, beta, defined as 1 over Boltzmann constant times temperature. And that's that constant number of particles and volume. And that is also equal to if you do a substitution and evaluate the chain rule for what these der derivatives are, that's also equal to Boltzmann constant times temperature squared times partial derivative of log Q with respect to T at constant N and V. And then in later videos, we saw that the entropy in the statistical mechanical sense is equal to Boltzmann constant times temperature times partial derivative of natural log of Q with respect to T at constant N and V, plus another term, the Boltzmann constant times the log of the partition function. Okay, and also reminding ourselves that the partition function Q is just the sum over all possible states I of the Boltzmann factor, which is e to the minus energy of that state divided by kt. Okay, so what we're going to start with is the definition of the Helmholtz energy. And we're going to see an expression for the Helmholtz energy in StatMech. Remember, A, the Helmholtz energy, is defined as internal energy minus temperature times entropy. So if we evaluate that here, if we look at what T times S is, it's going to be kBt squared d long q dt, and that's equal to this kBt squared d long q dt up here. And so if we have u minus t times s, we'll have this term minus itself when you have another t multiplied in there. And then there's going to be just a minus kBt ln q there. So if you do the substitution and carry out this uh, particular algebra, see that you should arrive that the Helmholtz energy for a substance is minus kBt times log of the partition function. Okay, then we also remind ourselves that the Helmholtz energy is a function of temperature, volume, and if the number of particles are allowed to change, the number of particles. So we can write down the total differential of the Helmholtz energy in terms of its partial derivatives. So we have dA equals dA dt, constant N and V times dt, plus dA dt at, con not dA dt, dA dV, dA dV at constant T and N times dV plus DADN at constant T and V times DN. Okay, and we also know from some previous videos that the total differential of the Helmholtz energy DA is going to be equal to minus S DT minus PDV and then plus the extra term we're going to have here is just we're going to keep that dA dN at constant T and V times dN, number of particles. And then uh, if we want to talk about the number of particles or the number of moles, it's really easy to translate back and forth between those two. So we have dA dN at T and V times the change in the number of particles. That is equal to really missed there, dA d little n, number of moles, at constant T and V, times dN, the number of moles. And that's because the number of moles is just equal to the number of particles divided by Avogadro's number. So it's a, it's a matter of gaining and losing a factor of Avogadro's number inside of each of these here by the chain rule and then by the, tr the algebraic transformation between the two. So it's just you multiply by Avogadro's number and then you divide by it. Okay, so we have that all taken care of. And we're going to remind ourselves now that the Gibbs energy 
which is u minus ts plus pv, can be defined as a plus pv as the Helmholtz energy plus pressure times volume. And the differential of the Gibbs energy, dg, can also be defined as minus sdt plus vdp plus, so it's just the Helmholtz energy plus p times v. So that gives us that gives us from going from this equation here minus sdt minus pdv plus dadn. We add the term pv, so that just switches us from minus pdv to a positive vdp. That's a Legendre transform, as I've shown in previous videos on uh, natural variables. So it's just this, switch that term, and then you have dadn still left over as before or we could call it TADN with respect to number of moles and now that's that was still TV DN and we can say that the Gibbs energy instead of being a function of TV and N G is a function of T P and N and we can see that there we could either say total number of particles or total number of moles. We're going to say total number of moles here. So based off of the equivalence of the, fault of the uh, partial derivatives that we see here, we would have a similar expression for the Gibbs energy. And there would be one term which depends on the number of particles. Where we have DADN here, we would have DGDN here in terms of that whole DN term. So what we'll see is that our dA dN at constant temperature and volume is equal to dG dN and that will be at constant temperature and pressure because of the variables required for the Gibbs energy. So remember that our partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to the number of moles is also the definition of the chemical potential. We know the chemical potential is just dg dn. It's the molar Gibbs energy if you have a pure substance. So our chemical potential, in order to find that, we just have to take our, uh, our Helmholtz energy here and we differentiate this with respect to the number of particles or the number of moles n. So Boltzmann constant and temperature don't depend on the number of moles, but the partition function does depend on the number of moles, so we'd have to take its partial derivative with respect to the number of moles. So our final result is going to end up being that the chemical potential is going to be minus KBT, partial derivative of the log of the partition function with respect to number of moles of particles, at constant pressure and temperature, or temperature and pressure, whichever order you prefer. And that's going to be our final answer for what our chemical potential is in terms of our partition function. So just like for our energy, we take the log of it and we differentiate with respect to temperature, then multiply by kT squared. For our chemical potential, we're just going to take the log of our partition function, differentiate with respect to number of particles, and then multiply that times minus kBT. And there we have the chemical potential, which is equal to the molar Gibbs energy for the substance.